What's up Scrollgers, it's Nerp here, and today we are on the test server because earlier today a test server patch came out. This is the uh, first scrolls in set 7. So uh, if you don't know, sets and scrolls, like groups of 60 scrolls that uh, are released. So like, for example, I'm sure you heard set 6, set six was waypoints and set 5 was rebellion. Um, and then I think set 4 I guess was judgment, but yeah. So, also a couple scrolls were changed. Feedback Jolt now uh, does two damage instead of three damage, but it does two damage per enchantment. So a creature enchanted with three enchantments is gonna take six damage. And uh, Prisoners of War just had a little text update thing. Yeah, so yeah, the new Feedback Jolt still costs three. Change a little bit. I don't think it will uh, change too much in terms of like its playability and stuff. Alright, so set 7. Uh, we saw for uh, Scrolls uh, Waypoints, Mojang released Scrolls onto the test server, or revealed Scrolls in the test server in three batches. Each batch was about like 15 Scrolls. Um, actually, more like 20 Scrolls. Uh, and I'm not sure what they're going to do this time. They've actually uh, spoiled some Scrolls through... Uh, on th uh, they spoiled a couple scrolls on scrolls.com and then on roastedbeanpotion.com and scrolls.france and scrollger.com. So they're try they're like spoiling some scrolls here and there. And this uh, update to the test server has the first 12 scrolls in set 7. So I'm just going to add them all to the table here. So here they are. Uh, so yeah, four of them we've already seen through spoilers on other sites. Maybe you haven't seen them, but I've seen them. Uh, four of them are the Scrolls Guide Set 7 Design Competition winners. Uh, we heard about those a couple weeks ago. And now they have art and everything, and some of them are changed slightly. Uh, and then the other four are just four completely new scrolls, part of Set 7. So I guess I'm just going to show you them if you didn't see. By the way, the test server is supposed to be open to all, not only the permanent test server access players. So go ahead on there. You just have to go on the launcher, and instead of clicking play, you click more options and then uh, play test server. Of course, you can't use uh, summoner, the scrolls mods uh, on the test server. So yeah, let's look at the uh, the growth things first. So first we have Earthen Splendor. Yeah, so three for each faction. I believe uh, one one unit for each faction, and the other two are. Yeah, one unit for each faction and the two are uh, spells or enchantments. So first we have a two cost growth spell called Earthen Splendor. Enchanted units you control get plus one attack and plus one health. So it took me a little while to understand what this scroll meant. I kept missing the word enchanted units. Because it doesn't, it's like, like Crimson Bolt for example, another spell, uh, says the plus two attack buff ends at the end of the turn. See, this didn't specify that, so I thought this was going to be like OP, and it would just give all your creatures this plus one, plus one uh, permanent buff, but no, it's only two enchanted units. So this that makes that scroll a lot worse. I think this is will be played in like super like high enchantment, like aggro growth decks, um, but not really much, not much else. Like I'm not going to include this in my aggro growth deck, I don't think. Uh, seems pretty justified for its cost. I'm not sure how much play it will get. It depends on how many like really popular enchantment decks there are. So that's that. I mean, not, not like a too interesting mechanic. I mean, I guess it is a unique mechanic in that it's the first spell that gives, like, a creature or something like permanent, um, permanent enchantment kind of thing. But uh, yeah. So and also, it's called Earthen Splendor, and we know there's a few other Earth type creatures in growth, and uh, here they are. So just adding to the enchantment uh, Earth mic Earth. Uh, theme, and it's also interesting to note the Earth creatures like Earthborn Keeper, Earthborn Mystic, they are not kinfolks. I actually just noticed that uh, yesterday. Just little things with the like, lore and everything, which seems to be slowly getting more fleshed out, uh, leading up to possibly an eventual campaign um, rumored to be, well not rumored, uh, said to be uh, worked on, and hopefully we might get that at the end of 2015. Uh, so next is eager to battle. So this, uh, yeah, so the Earthen Splendor was uh, one of the scrolls revealed. 
I believe it was real dumb, scrolger.com a couple days ago. And here's Eager to Battle. We already knew about this one as well. This was uh, one from the Scrolls Guide design competition for set 7. Uh, if you didn't know what the design competition was, it was like last month that everybody can uh, design scrolls and submit them and Mojang chose one for each faction to actually go into the game in set 7. This was one of the winners, the growth one. It's a lingering spell, lingers for 3 turns, uh, eager to battle. Creatures with 2 attack or less come into play with haste. Early bird gets the worm, hasty hunter gets the bird, kinfolk saying. Uh, speaking of flavor, I'm kind of going back and forth here, sorry about the unstructuredness of this. I just want to get this out because I'm home from school kind of late, so this video is going to be going up much later than these scrolls were actually put on the test server. Like, I hope it's still the same day though. Yeah, so, like, this doesn't have flavor text, and you see a couple scrolls down here don't have flavor text. It seems like Mojang is trying to, uh, have flavor text competitions be a thing. Like, right now there's one, there's a flavor text competition for, what was it, for Battle Dance, I think. It's going on in Scrolls Guide right now. I'll try to link that in the description below. Uh, and yet, if you, if you get the flavor text, then your flavor text will be on the scroll, and you're gonna get a design competition, uh, Avatar Head. So that's cool. And in terms of the scroll, first of all, I think this art uh, is pretty cool. You can see, it's I think that's Carnalizer's art. I think that's his signature down there. Looks like a little odd skull, almost like a mushroom. Um, yeah, the artists, if you look closely, uh, some of them have little uh, signatures, like Carnalizer's is that. He, you can see his on a lot of scrolls. If you look closely, like uh, Poi Poi Chen's, like a little poop, I think. I'm not sure about the other artists. So, and finally, in terms of the balance of the scroll, I think uh, it seems balanced. I think immediately, I think it's going to be get more play than Earth and Splendor. This might become a a just very good option for ag growth. Like it might be in just all ag growth decks. I don't know yet. Uh, attack two or less comes play with haste. Let's see all the growth creatures that have attack two or less. So let's see if I remember how to search things here. Attack two. No, that's not how you do it. Um, AP attack points. AP two or less. How do you do that? Greater. Did that do anything? AP less than two. All right, let's just do AP that and AP that. So no, it doesn't work. All right, let's see. these are all the uh, growth creatures. <laughs> growth creatures with two attack. Um, so yeah, these guys would come into play with haste, uh, earthborn mystic, you'd be able to draw a scroll actually really fast with that, that's cool. And then AP1, these are all more things that would come into haste, of course, Ragged Wolf would already do that. And here is where it gets interesting, does this work with Striped Fang Bear? I actually should test that, uh, I didn't test that yet. Because that could be a big, uh, difference if I'm gonna decide running this in aggrowth. Um... I mean, Eager Spell doesn't linger that long, and it does work for both sides, so that could backfire. I think I'm only going to run it if it if it works with Striped Fang. If it works with Striped Fang, you have a Relentless Attack coming down the board. Um, we'll see. Alright, I might actually try to test that in another video. Or maybe this video is going to be too long, though. Okay, so now, yeah, that's what I basically have to say with Eager to Battle. Uh, probably slightly on the good side of the like balanced. So it's a little better than average, but I don't think it's good enough to deserve a nerf or anything. Let's see how it plays out first. If it, if it works with straight finger, then it might need to be changed. And lastly, we have Steelwood Vindicator. He is the uh, completely new scroll that we didn't know about before uh, today. He wasn't revealed uh, earlier. So this is a human, so notably not a mystic or a kinfolk. Uh, so the first might be the first only human growth creature. Or no, uh, is is a keeper, Orthborn, Orthborn keeper is just a human, right? Yeah. Oops. Yeah. So Steelwood and Vindicator. Not much going on in the bottom of the scroll here, except Relentless. This is a four-two-two with Relentless. Uh. I guess that's pretty justified for the cost. This is his attack animation. Looks pretty cool. 
Um, definitely has the like double the double like sword things like the skirmishers have. So he has the relentless ability. Four two two for two. Obviously, uh, bad health for three cost, but then four attack is very good for three cost, and then relentless. So I guess you can compare this to Scatter Gunner. It has similar. Similar stats to Scatter Gunner, except instead of uh, Range Attack, it has Relentless. I think Relentless is better than Range Attack. Um, I think this will get play in aggro decks. Just a Relentless. Uh, I mean, it's a higher base attack than a Great Wolf. That's just great. So I think he'll be played in played in uh, aggro decks. I'll, I'll definitely try him out. Steelwood Vindicator. I mean, Growth does have a, a three cost to. To choose over him like Earthworm Keeper, Mystic, uh, Turn Brute, Wildling, Builder. There's a lot of growth heroes that are okay, so he'll have to fight for a spot. Next, we have the Energy Scrolls. So, first is Canister Automaton. Canister Automaton is the completely new scroll, the new unit that we haven't seen before, not revealed. It is an Automaton, so these are the other Automatons if you forgot. And it's not trait, it is, actually it is trait. I just have uh, energy turned off here. These are all the automatons. Um, so that is what, the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is the eighth automaton released, and I guess also Machine Priest has to do with automatons because uh, Machine Priest gives, it, gives them one plus one attack. So we're getting more love for automatons here. It is a two, two, three for two. Uh, so that's pretty normal for two. A lot of creatures have two, are two, two, two for two, and then have some kind of uh, ability maybe. And canister, canister automatons one is pretty good if you ask me. First of all, it's not ranged, so that's obviously important for energy decks. It does not have synergy with bombard, uh, but you'll see energy has uh, more countdown reduction though for non-ranged units. When canister automatons. Uh, when Canister Automaton is destroyed in melee combat, its attacker is dealt 3 physical damage. Uh, physical damage, Spiky actually does physical damage also, so... Canister Automaton, I guess, is just... It's really just Spiky 3. I mean, oh, it's not Spiky 3 because, let's say, a Ragged Wolf dealt 1 damage to this, the Ragged Wolf wouldn't take any Spiky damage. So, it's really just uh, when this gets destroyed, it deals the damage. So yeah, it's it's only so it's only like basically it's only spiky when it's destroyed, not when it just takes damage and not doesn't die. So I think this is gonna be good. Probably gonna be running all automaton decks, um, and also in energy decks, melee energy decks with like imagination mindset. It's uh pretty good for two cost. I like it. And this is it looks kind of like a little spider down here, and it like shoots out. It's it's a melee creature, but it shoots out stuff out of its like back. And. Uh, I wish hopefully they do something where like when it gets destroyed in melee combat it just like explodes and all this like paint splatters about. That would be cool. Looks like they're being like made in some sort of facility here. It explodes. Gram animator. Animator is like a decay thing, right? All right. Next we have Battle Dance. So Battle Dance uh, was one of the scrolls revealed. Uh, it was actually the scroll revealed in scrolls.com and the flavor text competition scroll right now. So it was a three cost energy spell. Uh, target creature and connected creatures have their countdown reduced by one. This is basically a thunder surge of countdown reduction. So it might seem really strong at first glance because you can just get your whole side of the board to just attack if you needed to. But it's really not great when you compare it to other scrolls. I mean, it might be a little better than Fury, considering you don't have to have your opponent countdown, but you are might. You might be put into a spot where you can't really, uh, when you're you're in a, like a bad positioning thing in terms of like clumping up for thunder surge and mangonels and stuff, or you might not be able to get your guys to attack these. Maybe you have one guy on the bottom of the board, the other guy on the top of the board, and you can't reach them both. So three cost. I mean, you, obviously you're going to compare it to bombard and fury, and it. I think it might be better than fury, but. I don't think battle dance is going to be included in range energy decks. Uh, let's say because. Bombard fills that spot, um, but in melee energy decks, Battle Dance is almost definitely going to be there. And it looks like a Cannonetta dancing in the wind. So yeah, that's all I have to say about that one. And here is the 
uh, design competition energy scroll lightning chest it is a rare oh yeah I didn't say the rarities the only the only thing that I went over so far that isn't a common is eager to battle which is uncommon yes yeah, so a lightning chest is a rare um, I believe that's the first design competition scroll that's a rare I like the other ones like from the past design I think they've all been uncommon but yeah lightning chest first of all I love this art that looks so cool um, like the chest is just being powered like a furnace so it's a lingering spell uh, linger four so it lasts a good amount of time unused energy is added to your current energy at the start of your next turn danger do not touch so this is the scroll I'm most interested in probably of all these scrolls this and like coronation I'm really the most excited for this means that energy is all about resources, right? Power trip, fulmination conduit, uh, pumping resources in like Psalm Giant and everything, everything like that. This will let you use your resources so efficiently. You play this and all the resources that uh, you have left over in your numer numerator, um, because you didn't have that many scrolls to play, they carry over to the next turn and you can just keep using it. So if you, like it's really, I think this is gonna be a really good scroll. Um, at worst, you just wasted a scroll, but it's probably going to get good value for you. Uh, I'll definitely be testing that a lot, that out a lot. Uh, I think it could work in really just about any energy deck, especially energy decks like uh, like Automaton Energy, where it just ramps up to a really high amount of resources. Uh, so yeah, Lightning Chest, really, really intriguing. So now it could actually end up being a little strong. Now we are into the Order Scrolls. Uh, Mystic Storm is is from it was re revealed on Scrolls France, uh, Scrolls Fr. It's a French Scrolls uh, news or community forum website kind of thing. All in French though. So it's a spell for two cost. Your lingering spells count up by three, and your opponent lingering spells count down by two. Uh, first of all, I want to comment on the art. Art. Look, it says Carn. I think that's Carnalizer down there. But the art seems, it feels less scrollsy than the other scrolls. It feels almost like kind of uh, cartoony, I don't know. I think it looks cool though, it's like this wizard guy. But uh, yeah, so yeah, yeah, Order does have like mystic-y type creatures like Wing Sorceress and Magnetizer. But the thing is, so what am I saying? Uh, Order probably got the worst type of lingering removal. Like, each faction got linger removal with waypoints, right? Like, Stone Enigma is decent. Rattle Him is decent. Um, whatever the growth one is that you sacrifice a creature and lingering. Rekindled Spirit is okay. But then, Order got Banner, like, Banner of Ordinance. And Banner of Ordinance just kind of sucked. It makes... I mean, you have to lose. First of all, no. The thing is, you can't destroy the lingering spells the turn you play. You have to wait until the next turn to blow it up, to destroy the lingering spell. So that already is giving your opponent a whole turn of the linger effect, which in Halls and Lost case is another scroll. Uh, so people just don't play Banner of Ordinance, Banner of Ordinance much. Uh, so giving Order another way to combat lingering spells is nice. Uh, although I don't think it's really going to get much play until people really play more lingering spells. Right now we only see a lot of Halls of Mom Lasa, maybe some cut, sometimes Skull Shrine here and there. Uh, so, yeah, it's really not going to be too common where you're going to have a lingering spell out and your opponent's going to have a lingering spell out and you can get great value out of this scroll. So I don't think it's going to be played too much, but it's probably going to be balanced because, um, I mean, I can see it having good value at times and... Probably more lingering spells, maybe in set seven, that are going to come out. Next, we have Proud Mercenary. This is the new unit that we have not seen before today. Uh, he looks like this. He uh, just says creature. Um, I'm sure that he is going to get the subtype human soon. Mercenary. He's probably he, he's probably not going to get knight. He doesn't look like a knight. Uh, he's. I don't know if he's gonna get soldier. He seems like he's gonna be like a righteous partisan and gallant defender, where they don't they just they're just humans. Um, but he could get soldier. I'm not sure. So 
He's a three drop for order. Uh, three cost uh, is actually right now. It's really taken by Righteous Partisan, um, Wing Shield, and Royal Skirmisher in order. Adding a fourth guy to the mix uh, is cool, and I think he will actually be in the mix. He seems pretty good. He's like a Jason creature, so plus one attack. He's a two two three for three. So immediately you're like, that's not too good. Um, same stats as actually uh, Royal Spearman. So he has spiky three, but uh, our guy right here, Jason Chris is a plus one attack. So he's basically like a different kind of ducal infantryman. I think a better ability than ducal infantryman is he can reach like farther and actually affect more creatures. Uh, but I don't know. He might be played in like probably not late game decks, but he's gonna be played maybe in some tempo order decks just to get more attack to be able to hit the idols faster and stuff like that. You know. Uh, I'll, I'll probably give him a try in testing. And moving on to Coronation. This is, this got everybody up in arms when they, uh, this was one of the design competition winners. Uh, when they revealed that this was going to be uh, their choice for order, everybody went, everybody went nuts. Not really sure why everybody went so crazy about this scroll. It seems like it's just adds more excitement to the game to me. So it's First, it jumps out of you. Eight cost. Uh, nothing in nothing. None of these scrolls uh, are more than three. Besides this. First of all, I think the art is awesome. And uh, here is what this says. So, enchanted creatures base count on a set to one. So it's gonna start attacking every single turn, and it gets plus six attack and plus six health. So, eight eight uh, eight resources for a super power god enchantment. But then the catch is when enchanted creature is destroyed. All idols you control are destroyed, which is a cooler way of saying you lose the game. So, yeah, that is crazy. Um, obviously, I don't think this scroll is gonna be played if you don't have ward, because if you play this without ward, then a damning curse or violent dispersal, and you lose. I mean, against growth, I, I guess you don't really have to worry too much. But probably get. I mean, I'm not sure. This deck would. This scroll would really benefit Temple Order a lot because Temple Order means the extra attack to deal idle damage fast and stuff like that. Late game order, I don't think. It's eight, eight resources, so it's going to be usable to late game order. But late game order, when they're at eight resources and they're able to play stuff, they really already win the game. So I don't know. I think I'm going to try to make this work in maybe a mid to late game night deck. I'll see how it works. Uh, definitely with Wings of Orders. I don't want my guy with Chando this to die. I'm definitely going to do a lot of testing with this one. Very cool scroll. Uh, I believe there's nothing over 8 cost in scrolls right now. Like the champ A couple of the champions used to be 9 cost, but then they were brought down to 8. Next we have the Decay Scroll. This is Shambler Sickness. Uh, it's an enchantment displacement. Uh, other displacement uh, type scrolls are like Flip Pother and stuff like that. So this was uh, one of the design competition winners. And, uh, what do we have here? So, it's one cost. Enchanted unit's move is decreased by one before attacking. Enchanted unit is moved to a random adjacent tile. So, this basically makes it attack Kamira Shambler where it moves before attacking, which makes it really uncontrollable. Uh, and also, can't move normally. So, I don't know. I mean, really, I don't think anybody's really going to play this in a Decay deck. I'd rather... Like, it's probably just worse than Binding Root, because this makes the move decrease by 1, Binding Root decreases move by 2, and uh, this um, lets the creature move when they attack, so that could still be useful for the if you put, put the sun on an opponent. You can put it on yourself, and you can probably get a creature to move farther when they attack. Probably not worth it, though. So it says the Mire can do strange things to the mine. What I think this could have uh, potential with is an energy with oculus cannon um so it says unit you can chance on so you put this on an oculus cannon and you can have some piercing down another lane move it around uh, i'm sure we'll see some kind of decay energy deck that combines shambles sickness and oculus cannon but we'll see about that next we have ajin vapors it's a lingering spell for two decay linger four poison damage is increased by one uh and Ashen, if you didn't know, 
in the Scrolls uh, world map that was on Scrolls.com about like a year ago or less than a year ago. Uh, the Ashen Islands are north of the Ilmire in Decay's territory. So this is more lore stuff coming out here. This kind of looks like a little dino, a little lizard just being shriveled up and slowly dying. Uh, so... Is that Carnalizer's signature right there? I think so. Um, I mean, this is just uh, the old Miasma Well, right? This is the old Miasma Well, and it's better and worse uh, for different reasons. It's better that it's harder to destroy because um, Miasma Well just had three health and it was destroyed by creatures and stuff like that. I mean, there are lingering, um, there are lingering, counter lingering spells, but I don't think those are as common to as easily destroyable as a Miasma Well was. But the problem with this is it goes away after four turns. I think it will be played in really all poison decks. Um, notably, it can't stack like Mazowell did. So, like, Lingering Spells don't stack. When you play another one, it just adds on to the countdown. So, it's not going to really get out of hand. I think it'll be in poison decks. Not really much else to say about that. I'm glad that a Mazowell type scroll comes back into the game, though. And lastly, we have Infested Huck. Huck. Huck, what is it? I just say Huck? Infested Husk. Uh, it's a two cost decay creature, um, undead. So this is the completely new, completely new thing that was, uh, came out today. So, got like zombie skeleton thing going on here. That's what he does when he attacks. He like falls forward, slashes about. So, fits with the cave's theme of undead creatures having at least uh, three countdown. All undead creatures, besides like Meyer Shamble, have three countdown, I think. So, it's a 2 3 3 for 3. So, for undead, it's kind of pretty normal for a 2 cost. You can immediately compare it to, uh, to, you know, the Slayer thing. I'm having trouble finding. I can't find Slayer. Uh,. Find it here. You know what I'm talking about, don't you? Why am I having so many problems with Slayer Siege? Oh, this doesn't have Trait Slayer. It has... Yeah. Yeah, so he's kind of comparable to Slayer Siege. Um, they're both two three threes, and Slayer Siege, and they're both undead. Slayer Siege has Slayer, and Infested Hust has one plus attack for each poisoned unit. Immediately, I don't think this is going to be that good. Uh, I mean, how many units are going to be poisoned on the board at a time? At most, maybe you'll have four. Usually, it's only one or two. Uh, well, usually it's zero, but if you're playing this in the deck, I'm sure you have a lot of poison in it. I mean, it could get to really high attack. Maybe it will be played in, like, super poison decks. I don't know. I'll have to do some testing in my poison decay deck. Doesn't seem like a poison decay deck can really have room for a creature like this, though. Poison decay decks are kind of controlly, and they really just have removal type stuff until they get like a big necker getting to win. This guy can deal a lot of elder damage fast if he has a higher attack though. So I think that'll be it. So these are the first 12 scrolls on the uh, on test server for set number 7 which does not have a name yet but uh, it's, I think we might get a name soon. Maybe in the next uh, This Week in Scrolls post on scrolls.com. Uh, so Again, test server should be open to all right now, and follow uh, r slash scrolls on Reddit, and stay up to date on recipepotion.com, scrollsguide.com, scrolls France if you're French, uh, stuff like that, scrollser to stay up to date on all your scrolls news, because I think uh, Mojang's going to have more more spoilers for scrolls in the coming weeks, and maybe another batch of set seven scrolls on the test server, and I'll try to make another video when that happens. Uh, so... I guess that'll be it for today. Like the video if you enjoyed, subscribe for more content like this, and I will see you all next time. Keep on scrolling, scrollgers.